What's up and welcome back to another live stream with Gizmo Slip Tech. Today, we've got the Acer Nitro 16. We're gonna unbox this bad boy. The first thing you should know is that there is this laptop list spreadsheet that has literally every laptop you can possibly buy that's of any value really or consider consideration, at least from a USA market perspective. And many international links are now also on this list. And our top deal section covers the best Best value gaming laptops out there. If a value, if if you're getting more than ten dollars uh, or ten points per dollar um, on your laptop, it's an absolutely insane deal. Let's talk about the Nitro 16 and all the different configurations. We've got uh, all the way down to an RTX 4050, currently on sale for 949, normally a thousand bucks. You got the uh, another 4050 version with a QHD screen though for 1150. So if you just want the, the screen upgrade, but you're okay with lower power RAM and GPU and CPU, then that's one way you can get the better screen at a discounted price. Nitro 16 4050 with uh, fully featured RAM, one terabyte SSD, Full HD plus 400 nits screen for 1200. To me, none of these deals are particularly good except maybe this top one. Nitro 16 with a 4060 full HD screen, 1299. It's probably not that great of a deal um, at this point because I was able to snag this QHD 4070 version for 1349 when it was on sale a couple weeks ago. So this is the version that we'll be reviewing today, the Nitro 16 Ryzen 7 3500 or 35 7735 HS QHD plus 165 hertz 500 nits display. It's supposed to be 100% sRGB. We'll have to see if that is correct or not. Then we've got an RTX 4070. It should be a uh, maximum wattage of like at least 105, 110 watts. And uh, we got a couple other configurations of the RTX 4070, one with a, a higher end CPU here. It looks like these last two also another even higher end CPU. So there are basically three different configs with the 4070 with slightly better CPUs. I think this bottom level is probably the right way to go if you're trying to save some money. And again, this was on sale a couple weeks ago for $13.49. So here's the Acer Nitro 5. This one's currently on sale, has a 3070 Ti. I've been talking about this one for a couple weeks. I think it's gonna, be, I think it's a phenomenal deal overall. It, it is one of the best bang for the bucks out there with the highest GPU performance per dollar on the entire sheet, 1135. QHD high quality display, not as bright as the one we're doing today, but a 3070 Ti with a great screen and a good CPU, this thing's a great value at $969. MSI Katana 15, an i7 12650H RTX 4070, 16 gigs of RAM. This is 1159 for an RTX 4070. It's phenomenal value from a GPU performance per dollar perspective with a 4070, $9.75. That said, it's like one of the lowest quality displays you can buy on a laptop. So if you really, if you really want a better display, don't buy this one. The Legion Slim 5. So this is another alternative. Right now it's on sale for $9.99 with an RTX 4060 and a Ryzen 5 7640HS. This thing is uh, gonna be a very slim profile. And uh, this is one that I plan on actually ordering for review today. So we'll be able to do a hands-on unboxing of this one very soon. HP Omen 16. I'd say overall, this is great value at 1,000. I think it's a great value at 1,000. Omen 16 i7 13700HX. It's an upgraded CPU with extra E cores, RTX 4070, 16 gigs of DDR5, one terabyte SSD, QHD, 240 hertz for $14.99. This is one of the best competitors to the Nitro 16 from a value perspective. Aorus 15X, I got my hands on with this laptop when I was at CES. I actually did get to check out the laptop in person. Feels very slim, very portable, and it's got a nice chassis all around. I do like Aorus as a brand, but they're, I did an Aorus 17X review and their software wasn't quite fully optimized as well as I would like, which led me to not being able to recommend the Aorus 17X as, as much. Now, hopefully the Aorus 15X with the 4070, you know, it's gonna be configured properly. Oh, sorry, Asus Strix G16. This has got the maxed out i9-13980HX processor, RTX 4060, and a QHD 500 nits display with a higher color gamut of 100% P3 color gamut. So this uh, Strix G16 has the highest end CPU and Basically, unless you jump up to a mini LED display, 
This has the highest end display that you can get as well. So you got some nice RGB on this laptop. Obviously excellent, excellent CPU performance. If you're after CPU performance, multi-core rendering, potential performance, or eSports gaming performance, this laptop is phenomenal. It's one of the best CPU performance for your money. 1650 with this much CPU performance should be getting close to 30,000 in Cinebench R23 and a very portable package. Of course, there is the more budget Strix G16 right now. It's 1339 currently priced with the RTX 4060 and the lower end i7 13650HX um, and a decent quality full HD 165 hertz display. Yeah, so this one is also good value and definitely a competitor to the Nitro. If it dips below, I don't know, around 1250, a little under 1300, that's when I'd say it's a good, a really good deal. Right now at, at the current price, it's a decent deal. Uh, it's not certainly not bad. You know, you're getting a lot of RGB and some fancier speakers and stuff like that with this, this chassis and a really nice cooling system with this chassis too for the money. The last but not least on this uh, overview, We've got the Legion Pro 5, Ryzen 7 7745HX. So you get a next gen processor, RTX 4070, and a QHD 165 Hertz 300 nits display. All right, there are some coupons to keep in mind as well. Extra 5 and buy more Lenovo is the coupon codes to keep in mind. 1420, so currently $80 cheaper than this Nitro 16, but uh, the display is rated at 200 nits dimmer. Yeah, other than that, that's probably your primary trade-off. Obviously it's a different chassis, different port layout and everything, but it's in a very similar vein. This thing's got a pretty basic box. We got the Nitro logo out on front, and it's also a pretty simple unpackaging process. There was an external box that uh, was used to ship the laptop. This was not the external box. This is the secondary shell. And we've got our laptop in a foam container there. Got a question about your Acer device? Ask us. So support.acer.com, also the number 1-866-661-7100. That's four sixes. Nitro 16 setup guide. If you want to really take a look at this, a brown packaging box here, or a brown, brown packaging bag. Manufacturer date was March 29th. So we got uh, Planet 9, Planet 9 GG stickers. Then we've got our International Traveler's Warranty. Last time I delved into this, it was basically like, as long as you're in a internationally supported warranty country, um, you can usually get warranty support. Um, even if you're not inside the United States, as long as you bought it when you're in a country that also is supported with a warranty and you travel to the other countries that are supported by a warranty. And then they also have your warranty agreement here. Of course, if you damage the laptop yourself, you're gonna be uh, out of luck. It's a one year parts and labor. And there's another support number right there. For the United States, 866-952237. Here is the power brick. So first up, we have the power cable. It's a close to six feet long, like a full length power cable. Then we have our power brick. You can see it's a Ciccone. 330 watt. You're getting a full 330 watts with this RTX 4070 for some reason. I have no clue why. It's never gonna need that much juice. All right, and here is the laptop. Shabam. All right, notice we got this new etching or I guess plastic paint. This Nitro holographic logo is etched. And then this is a, pur a pink purplish paint and a blue paint uh, in an end, in an N symbol so if you flip it okay we also have a little cloth thing for the keyboard mouse area so when you flip this this way now it's an n it is holographic it looks pretty cool flex test going around the sides minimal flex just a little bit on the keyboard here we definitely got a bit of moderate flex i would say minimal flex over here again so you know typically you don't put your hands in the middle on the space bar here so that's a lot of laptops have this as a weak point not much flex in the front here going around the left a little bit of flex on the top no flex minimal flex here in the middle top top right no flex minimal flex along the right and i did press the power button or i'm not feeling anything uh messed up this keyboard is a lot like the keyboard all the other nitro fives that i've tried recently i think it's the exact same layout as a matter of fact as those other nitro like nitro five that has a 16 inch chassis so very similar the hinge is i'd say a bit looser then I would ideally like, uh, once you get back into the normal range, it's pretty good. A bit of wobble to it after you let it go, but 
I'd say it's about average in terms of hinge stiffness, certainly like strong enough to hold the laptop steady. Um, now the hinge design, we got two separate hinge connector points here. All right, they raise up and go back. And as long as these are well-designed, theoretically they can last a really long time. The, the main point of weakness is if there's uh, any kind of disconnect between the swivel and usually the display part, maybe sometimes they're glued or maybe not screwed in correctly or that little metal piece or plastic piece breaks. This specs lists one USB A 2.0. Interesting. It also lists one USB 4 with 65 watt power delivery and then a USB C with display port and 65 watt power delivery. HDMI 2.1. On the right side, we have two USB A's right here. These are probably 3.2's right here that we are talking about. So we also have a couple status indicator lights for charging or sleep mode here. We also have a Kensington lock and a exhaust for the right side. We have our USB C's. Notice there is no Thunderbolt 4. Of course, this is a Ryzen laptop. So one of these is USB 4, which has the same theoretical throughput as Thunderbolt 4, but it doesn't have Thunderbolt 4 certification. The other one is just USB 3.1 or 3.2 or whatever that the website was saying. Literally doesn't say whether it's 3.1 or 3.2, it just says slash. Um, HDMI 2.1 here on the back. So if you wanted to use an external monitor, like a 4K 120 Hertz, you can use this HDMI 120 Hertz to do that or a high refresh rate gaming display. Of course, you gotta use a high, H a high output HDMI cable as well if you do that, not just any HDMI. Then we've got an ethernet port here on the right with a bottom facing ethernet out. So you're gonna have to dig under the laptop and lift up and pull. Then we've got our USB-A. Looks like this is the 2.0. So this is where you wanna plug your mouse in or keyboard in for basic throughput, maybe a headphones or something if you're using USB headphones. Uh, but yeah, that's our 2.0 port. So low quality port here on the left side. We have a micro SD card slot and a headset port, headset combo port as well there. Got five total USBs, an HDMI 2.1 and a a micro SD card slot, no mini display port, and this is a low quality USB port. The front, of course, no ports here on the front. I would say the ports on this are pretty good. Uh, they're not bad, they're not necessarily amazing, but they've got um, a pretty decent port selection. It's good, let's go ahead and take the laptop apart now. So, looks like we just need your typical small Phillips head for taking this laptop apart. Plus, we're gonna use at least probably one pry tool here. Probably gonna need a guitar pick here as well. Yeah, I think they're all the same size, so I don't think you'll have to worry about keeping them organized, I don't think. Here is a 90 watt hour battery. You know, I'm a little disappointed they didn't put a 100 watt hour battery in this, because look, we definitely have some space here that could have fit a 100 watt hour battery in this chassis almost for sure. And initially, my impressions here are also that there's quite a bit of extra space, like gaps, you know, in this laptop between different things, between uh, some of this tech here. They really didn't maximize the space of the laptop's internals. You know, like given how much extra space there is on this motherboard, I wonder if they could have fit a third M.2 slot, you know? There's so much space around these speakers, they could have put in higher quality, bigger speakers, for example. There, the speakers here do look a little small. Looks like we have a MediaTek Wi-Fi here. So uh, that's also a more budgety Wi-Fi. You can upgrade that for 20 bucks if you want to though. If, you know, it downloaded and worked just fine for me. We got our two memory slots right here. So it is so dim. We've got a second M.2 slot right here. Let's see here. So the second M.2 goes from here. So it's a full size 2280 and it looks like it would fit a double sided SSD, no problem. So that's really great. SK Hynix 1RX16 PC5 4800. So this is DDR5 4800 RAM. It's not 5600. Um, and it is SK Hynix, which is one of the most popular brands we've seen so far in 2023. So we've got two primary fans, no third fan anywhere. A lot of laptops this year, like the higher end, like the Strix G16 and some of the other ones have a third fan for chassis heat, but this one skips that and it's probably okay. The, the 4070 and this Ryzen chip shouldn't use too much wattage, making it too hot. And this cooling system looks like it's gonna be just fine. So we've got this dedicated heat pipe on the right. This goes to this exhaust. Then we've got another dedicated heat pipe here. And then we've got another dedicated heat pipe over here. Three dedicated heat pipes with two shared heat pipes going across the rear of the device. So that means that uh, about half the heat generation will be split between the two fans and half of the heat generation will be exclusive 
to just one side or the other. Now, usually the GPU has a lot more of the heat pipes. And so I'm guessing this is the GPU side uh, over here. But the, the interesting part is it's kind of hard to tell on this laptop which one's which. Usually there's like VRMs and everything, and this could be the VRMs, and this could be the GPU. I think this is the CPU. I think this is the GPU. That's the uh, the heat pipe overview. I think this is gonna be sufficient for keeping the system at a reasonable temperature, given the equipment we have inside not being too thermally demanding, but this is certainly not an overkill. You can see the backlight on the keyboard here. It's not super bright. Like you can see in the studio environment, you can kind of see the colors here. You can see the full quality of the keyboard back. Currently it's in wave mode. So wave mode is basically right to left across the four zones. So we got one zone, two zone, three zone, four zone. And we also have three levels of brightness and off. Starting from the top left, we have mute, volume down and up. Uh, and then we have, looks like, an, I guess that's the lock button, the Windows lock button. Brightness down, brightness up, display. If you wanna do like your displays on uh, F7. Microphone mute, airplane mode, trackpad off, keyboard brightness, down down and up, print screen, which is your crop image, Im screenshot mode basically, insert and delete keys, rewind, pause, play, forward, power button, and a num number pad with full size arrow keys. I, lo I love the functionality of this keyboard. We also have this nitro button. This is how you launch your nitro sense, which is your application for controlling the whole laptop. And as far as I can tell, pretty much everything is in that one application, which is great. Trackpad, unfortunately, is a plastic trackpad. Really too bad. And you can see that you do get quite a bit of oil buildup for as, the, as far as looking on it. Like I basically just use this for a day installing the applications. It clicks a little bit mushier than some of the other ones, but this is definitely one of the features you might skip or not realize that you're not getting as good a quality with this laptop when you go to buy it. It's also not as big of a trackpad as some of the other uh, laptops. One other thing I just noticed is we do have this LED button over here. This is like what our power button used to be like. If I press this mode switch key, mode cycling, AC in, on battery equal, and then if you press it, it'll switch to turbo mode on and off. So you can press this to cycle your modes or you can have it just be turbo on off. So you can choose what you want it to be. Uh, I'll have it cycle the modes. So when we press this, it's gonna cycle between balanced performance performance and turbo and quiet. When you click any of these, you get a flash. It flashes your system with a different color. Turbo is purple, performance is red, balanced is orange, quiet is blue, light blue. So uh, there's also fan control. You can do auto fans, max fans, or a custom. Either fan, left or right, to be whatever percentage you want it to be. The lighting for the keyboard is also tracked and controlled in here. If, uh, we have quite a few different modes. So static, you can pick the color, change the color to be whatever you want. Wave, you can change the speed and direction. And it's just like kind of a rainbow color on the keyboard. Shifting is interest interesting. I'm, I'm manually changing the color. I would not want this. This is, what are they? What epileptic seizure mode or something? Meteor mode, I guess bounces back and forth and you can pick the color you want it to use, but you can't use like rainbow. Breathing brings a color, whatever color you want on and off the laptop. Neon, that looks like it's just a color shift. Zoom, you go in and out of the, the four zones. Twinkling is just flashing at you. What are these, <laughs> what are these lighting profiles? Wave, I think looks the best in terms of gaming RGB though. Okay. It is face tracking me. There's not much detail in the hairs. The colors are maybe a little bit bland. Overall, I mean, it'll work just fine, but uh, it does. the camera certainly looks a little soft. There is no camera compatible with Windows Hello. So no Windows Hello support. Inside of the Acer Nitro Sense, you've got advanced settings. And inside of here, you have different audio profiles, shooter, RPG, strategy, music, movies, voice, automatic, custom. We're gonna do music. And let's also get our baseline decibels right now in the room. So right around 42 decibels, just a hair under 42 decibels. Uh, let's go ahead and do Peter Spacey Roar. Not very good bass. Everything's pretty muddled. Mids, highs, it's all pretty muddled. Uh, let's move on to Faded A on Half-Life. Maybe this will be a little better.
Not much better on this. That is, that was not, that is okay-ish. La la la, love you like. La, 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 la. I love you like. The way I would describe the speakers are almost no bass, very minimal bass. You get a little bit of bass, but there's not real much, there's almost no thump to it. The mids, especially in Peter Spacey Roar, it's very like kind of all over the place. Like the whole, like the mids, lows and highs are all like being engaged at once. Everything sounds pretty muddled when everything's going on at once. La La Love You Like though, when it was just the mids, just the vocals going, like it sounded pretty good. It didn't sound bad. Now the, the total volume also was not particularly high. We did not get uh, like a lot of laptops get up to like 88 or 87 on the decibel meter. I saw 83 around the highest. So the total volume is not that good. The bass are not that good. Overall speakers are probably like a six. This is baseline level speaker system in this system. Close to or tied for the worst so far in 2023 that I've used. I would say poor overall speaker system. So we've got quiet, balanced, performance, and turbo. We're gonna test out those four profiles. And then in addition, we're gonna do max fan mode as well. We're gonna start with the loudest and see how quiet we get, all right? It keeps peaking at 64 decibels, so that's what we're gonna call it. Those are extremely loud fans. Let's go ahead and turn off max fans. We'll go to auto fans now. So we're seeing right around the same temperatures. The GPU climbed a little bit in temps. Could also just be heat saturation occurring. Interesting, it goes down to 60 and then it jumps to 64 occasionally. I don't know why, <laughs> super interesting. So maximum fans is just a little bit higher uh, RPMs, another 150, 200 RPMs higher. We're gonna go down to performance mode, okay? So we're dropping our, down, our fan profile down to performance mode. Our GPU voltage is the same. GPU clock went down to 2355, which is 45 less. Our temps have risen a little bit, but wow, those fans are much quieter now. You know, our heat is starting to climb. As our heat climbs, it may cause the fans to ramp up more. So what we've got going on right now is like a pulsating fan going from 49 something decibels up to 54 decibels. As the temperature in the application here, as the temperature spikes on the laptop, we're getting our fans, like if the temperature goes above 75, it looks like uh, we have a fan noise increase. So we're gonna go to balanced mode now. Look at our voltage, our GPU voltage dropped to 0.875. Our core clocks also dropped to 2100, 2235, 280. This is certainly being power limited a little bit more to help reduce our temps. Look at our CPU wattage. Only 12 watts right here. Super low CPU wattage in balanced mode. Of course, because we're using such low CPU wattage, that is going to impact our CPU gaming performance if you're CPU bound in whatever game you're playing. 66 degrees is very good on the temps here in balanced mode. 73 on the GPU, also very good. And I gotta say the system is is extremely quiet and it's not gotten any loud. It has not gotten loud at all. 44.7 decibels, that is excellent. Let's try quiet mode and see how quiet it is and what kind of performance we get. Okay, so we're doing 85 watts of power, 0.91 volts, 0.89 volts. So still a good amount of voltage going to that GPU. 2100 on the core clock for the GPU, 74 degrees so far. Let's give it a little more time to adjust its temps. Our temps are still very good. 74 degrees, 69 degrees just a hair above 42 decibels for quiet mode. That is excellent. You're gonna wanna run it in a more aggressive fan profile, probably at least performance or turbo mode if you want the full FPS experience because it's probably gonna be pretty dramatically different FPS. Here we go, let's see what we get on the display. Keep in mind, right, that this laptop display checker underestimates the display quality by, you know, about seven-ish percent, seven, eight percent, whatever. As long as we're within seven, eight percent of 100% sRGB, they will have held up to the claims. Originally, this laptop claim is 500 nits brightness, 100% sRGB. We are doing 94% sRGB, so that is within the range of 100%. Adobe is at 71, P3 is at 72, so basically, right around like 78 
a 79 for Adobe MP3. Brightness, 477 nits bright at 970 to one. So not quite 500 nits. 477 though is pretty dang bright. 18 nits brightness for the low end. That's not really that dark, honestly. And then for our color gamut, 94%, 71 and 72. I think this is obviously not like your high end graphics editor type of display, but it's excellent for gamers out there that are looking for a bright display in day-to-day -day life like it's very bright very vibrant and it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio so 25 60 by 1600 resolution excellent details this is going to make the vast majority of gamers very happy, especially at the $1349 price. You will rarely ever see a laptop display get this bright under $1,500. Yeah, we got some backlight bleed on this unit, that's for sure. My eyes visually, I'm seeing backlight bleed here, here, and here. This other, this stuff down here is just from my RGB behind me. Visually, I am definitely noticing some backlight bleed up here, here, and here mainly. Yeah, we're already hitting 95 degrees Celsius. We've seen 95 degrees Celsius be our thermal throttle point pretty much with all the different Ryzen chips out there doing package power right here, 95 watts. Very high amount of package power being pulled through the system. Our temps are very hot, 90 eight degrees right now. Basically thermal throttling, doing 4.3 gigahertz across all those cores. 14,000 for our Cinebench R23 score is still pretty good. I think what we got going on in this system is gonna be a good amount of power for the vast majority of users out there. If you need to do some video editing, you wanna do some whatever you wanna do, it's pretty much gonna be able to handle it. 14,177, let's go ahead and do our 10 minute test. Right now we are averaging 95, 94.3 watts, which basically means that whenever it's under load, it's doing 95 watts. Very impressive. It's been very consistently 4.35 gigahertz, basically 4.34, averaging 98 degrees. 14,155, just what I was expecting. Good CPU performance all around. Let's go ahead and do time spy now. We're hitting, we're, we're in turbo mode with max fans enabled, starting off at 55 degrees Celsius on the GPU, 58 degrees on the CPU, 97 watts, 2400, 2415 on the GPU boost clock. So even a little higher than what we were doing before. 4.6 gigahertz on that CPU, 925 millivolts, is the node we're on for the GPU. 4.45 gigahertz, 65, 75 watts of power, 80 watts of power now in the CPU test. Pretty good amount of throughput there. Okay, out of the box, 12,383. Very nice. 10,202 for our CPU score. Very nice. We're gonna use high settings, the, the default high settings to start with. Right out the gate, 150 FPS here in QHD. And so far our 1% lows has also been excellent. I mean, this is very good performance for high settings. Um, let's go ahead and set everything to low. Okay, so 200. Wow, when I did that zoom in, we had a little bit of a 1% low stutter. We're doing 210 FPS, 120 for our 1% low. I, every time I zoom in, we have a little bit of a stutter there, which is not good. This display is, is quite responsive, very minimal ghosting on it. I think it's not the most fluid display I've used. I've, I've used better displays, but for a budget system, a I would say slight ghosting to the image. Let's see what our FPS is. 201 so far, right out the gate. Very nice. Oh. <laughs> this little. <sighs> so many enemies right there. Okay, so right now we're doing 176 FPS, 81 for our 1% low. Um, I wish our 1% low was better. Overall, fun. I can clearly play the game really well, even at this QHD resolution. It's just, I do wish our 1% lows were higher. Here we are, our settings, 2560 by 1600. 165 hertz for our frame rate cap. We're gonna go to minimum. We're gonna go to performance. DLSS on quality, so. Okay, so looking at our initial FPS, we're doing 95 and 71 for our 1% lows. That's excellent. 
52 watts of power going to that CPU, which is very good. It's very steady FPS. Things are looking very smooth. Hey, this door's open. I don't think this door is normally open. Where are you? There you are. <laughs> 97 FPS, 68 for 1% lows. It's very good. Very good uh, FPS in Warzone. All right, so 2560 by 1600. Ray tracing on. DLSS on quality. Ultra Nightmare is a setting we're gonna play on. These graphics do look really good, but we're only getting 24 FPS right now. Whoa, look at our wattage. 33, 31. What's going on with our wattage utilization? Yeah, I think the VRAM is maybe the limiting factor here locking up both the cpu and the gpu let's see all right we'll just do ultra settings like a loser okay all right so now we're hitting proper i don't know what's going on with ultra nightmare ultra nightmare is not working very well obviously 95 watts 2400 98 100 gpu utilization 4.5 gigahertz on the cpu 44 watts is very good all right we're ready to use this let's kill some stuff our one percent low we are getting some stutters here and there they're not too noticeable because they're not too strong of setters, but how do I kill that guy? Okay, well, there you go. 151 FPS, 39 for 1% low. It feels pretty good, even though our 1% low is 39. It's, I'm not really feeling the, those lows hit me very hard. God of War, let's go. Gotta keep in mind our resolution, 2560 by 1600. DLSS on quality. Graphics modes, ultra settings. Doing uh, 99 watts, 96 watts to this GPU. 2400 on the GPU boost clock. 83 degrees on the CPU, 87 on the CPU now. But yeah, keeping the temps in a good range. The game's looking gorgeous, lots of detail, with QHD resolution. 66 FPS, 26 for our 1% low. Very playable, obviously if you want to get high FPS gaming, you can just go in here, change it to original graphics settings. Uh, and now we're in the 90 to 100 range. So very good, very playable. Game looks great. No problems in God of War. Hogwarts. Okay, so windowed, full screen, DLSS, quality, frame generation is enabled. Ultra settings with low texture quality. Everything is set correctly. Let's move into the test. We're at QHD resolution. It's harder to push FPS at QHD resolution, but we're still hitting in 70s range. 58 for a 1% low is actually really good right now. Now we're running into new areas. We're getting some frame time stutters right here. You can see those stutters happening. 66 FPS, 23 for our 1% lows. Generally, it's definitely still pretty playable, but getting just a little hitching here and there. Our VRAM usage is 6.7 gigs. We only have eight gigs of VRAM on this GPU. Our low textures is helping us here not run into constant stuttering. So let's go ahead and do this test at QHD resolution, and then I'll turn off ray tracing and we'll watch the FPS counter go up quite a bit. So we are CPU bound, I wanna point that out, 75% GPU utilization. CPU bound because there's so many NPCs in this area of the map. 59 FPS, 26 for our 1% lows. Definitely playable at QHD resolution. So if you're to tweak the settings a little bit, you just go in here, you flip these three settings off, apply. No ray tracing, 104. 101, much better, okay? So in the 90s to 100 range again, just disabling ray tracing in the game still looks very good. Now the bigger question is, can we turn the textures up to medium? But it might actually, yeah, we are seeing more texture utilization here now. And medium textures in this game look way better than low as well. But yeah, I'm seeing some textures that were low popping up and changing into medium textures. We're also getting a lot of 1% lows as we're loading in all these textures again. 2560 by 1600. Resolution, we don't want AMD, we want DLSS quality, we want ultra settings, 72, 73 FPS on average, 28 for our 1% lows. Again, this is usually a very CPU bound game, but in QHD resolution, it does usually become GPU bound by a little bit, but CPU wattage is still very heavy on the draw. Look at that, 62 watts of CPU. Our CPU temps though are not maxed. We have no laptop cooler. We have no undervolt enabled. These are good CPU temps. We'll see if they go up more. We had a nice big frame time stutter right here as we turned the camera. 73 F 
PS, 24 for 1% low. I wish our 1% low was a bit higher, but uh, Dead Space, you can see our frame time graph. It almost always looks like this. It's got little, uh, little frame time leggies, but in general, it still feels smooth to play the game, which is just, it's really interesting that it does that. It's the only game really that has that consistent frame time um, input lag, but the actual gameplay looks smooth. 72 FPS, 31 for our 1% low so far. 88 degrees on that CPU, 61 watts of power, 92% GPU utilization, now 100%. 2400 for the boost clock on that GPU. Not quite using all the VRAM, but it's close. 6.8 gigs of VRAM utilization. 82, 87, 75 watts of usage on that gpu so using that gpu quite a lot not as high a wattage because we've basically shifted the wattage over to the cpu 77 fps 28 for our one percent low very playable just going down to balanced mode we boosted our fps up to the 80 90 range which is more the range that i would want to play a game like this in that's probably what i would i'd probably just keep it at these settings right here so okay so we're gonna do ultra preset textures on medium to dlss on quality 88 fps right now 72 73 for our one percent lows is very good we got tiny little blips in the the frame time graph otherwise the game is running extremely smooth 64 degrees on that gpu 72 on that cpu 2400 megahertz core clock for the gpu hitting high boost clocks uh for that gpu i love to see it 6.2 gigs of VRAM utilization. We are not bumping into the cap because we have medium textures enabled. CPU at 70 degrees is also excellent. 38, 39 watts of power going to that CPU in Last of Us here. So overall, very good performance in Last of Us. It's QHD, so I mean, it's definitely gonna be playable with these settings on this laptop, no problem. Let's go down to balanced mode. All right, so it's gonna be a lot quieter fans, and I'm gonna turn the speakers up to max, and we'll see what the game audio sounds like and what kind of temps we get. Temps are great, 60, 67 for both the CPU and GPU. 90 watts of power to that GPU. 2300 on the core clock. CPU temps, our CPU wattage came wow. down to only 22 watts. The fans, as we tested in the fan noise test, extremely quiet. The speakers sound pretty good right now. I think these kind of speakers are benefit from this type of gameplay environment. This sounds really good. Like the gameplay experience is still very good. So the one thing I'll say is the FPS is very good. The fans are quiet and the audio, the audio is very loud. I can clearly hear the game audio. Absolutely no problem. If you're, if you're in the mode, if you're, if you want to run this laptop in balanced mode for reduced fan noise and better audio quality and to where you don't bother other people with fan noise or anything like that, this laptop can definitely do that. No problem. Okay. High quality ray tracing, full screen enabled 2560 by 1600 DLSS on quality frame generation is enabled 83 FPS. 6.6 .6 gigs of VRAM utilized. So we're not running into VRAM stutters. Don't have to turn down textures. 7.3 gigs now used. 78 FPS, 96 watts being utilized, 2400 megahertz again, 99% GPU utilization. So our CPU is not bottlenecking us pretty much at all right now in these games. Okay, what do we get? 83.7 FPS for our median FPS. Uh, that is slightly higher than the Blade 14 by like a couple FPS, so that's good. And our main FPS was 72, so no problems there. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is next. All right, so we're exclusive full screen, DLSS on quality, refresh rate 165 graphics highest settings ray tracing on ultra 88 fps 90 fps 73 for our one percent lows is excellent 90 watts of utilization 2400 on the core clock 4.6 gigahertz on the cpu 45 watts of power our temps are also still excellent at 63 on the gpu 69 on the cpu the gpu is pretty much rock solid hitting 925 millivolts on the voltage node. 2400 megahertz on the GPU boost clock, 95 watts of power, 76 degrees on the CPU, 50 watts of power to that CPU, 90 FPS. So that's excellent. Overall, very good performance. Okay, so ray tracing on ultra, DLSS on quality. Display settings, frame generation is enabled. We're gonna go to 2560 by 1600 resolution. This is only 60 FPS. It's obviously very playable. We would probably 
want to turn some settings down, maybe just turn off ray tracing probably. We'll turn that off and see what we get because in a game like this, I really want to be hitting closer to 90 FPS if I can, at least for a full PC gaming experience. At least our 1% low has been exceptionally consistent and smooth. 67 FPS so far, 53 for our 1% low, 93 watts, 96 watts of utilization on the GPU. We are GPU bound at 99% GPU utilization. Overall, very good performance in The Witcher 3. 67, 54, very good consistent performance. I think the biggest thing is want a little bit smoother gameplay experience, especially if I have frame generation and on. So I'm gonna turn off ray tracing. Okay, so turning off ray tracing, which actually I think looks better in this game. Now we're hitting 100 FPS, QHD, DLSS on quality with everything on ultra, except for ray tracing being disabled. So like this game was originally made without ray tracing in mind. So in many ways, the shadowing, I think looks better with standard, standard shadowing instead of ray tracing. There's this cool thing called usage scenario. Okay, so your scenario profile will determine a lot of different things. You could do gaming, you could have daily use of gaming or max performance, max performance, you could have max fans enabled, you could have quiet occasion, you could have gaming, you could have a office once, you could say add new, I'm gonna call this one the office profile. All right, we're gonna call it office, boom, all right. We'll have this be balanced, that's fine. Fan control will be auto, and let's say our lighting we'll put to static, and we'll just click in the middle. We'll just click right in the middle of this circle to give us white lighting. All right, so we have white lighting on the keyboard now. What this does is it essentially allows us to go to like a gaming mode, and then when we get home, and I could go to like wave RGB lighting on the keyboard and have a little bit higher fans and all that stuff. And then when we get to the office, we click office mode, and it turns the keyboard into white. And so it all just fits into an office environment much better. I like that a lot. It's got a lot of functionality to that for anyone that's gonna be switching between different types of environments, which a lot of gamers that can afford a laptop this expensive are gonna be able to take advantage of that. Now, me personally, I would be like, woo, RGB, even in the office, but that's me. I'm not afraid of my gamerness, uh, but depends on who you are. All right, so Acer Nitro 5 summary review. We compared this at the beginning of the review to all the different laptops out there uh, around the $1,500 mark, uh, all the way down to like 970 for our top deal, the Acer Nitro 5, the 3070 with a QHD display. That laptop definitely gives you a bit more bang for the buck from a just raw GPU performance for money spent. That said, this is excellent overall performance for your money. The display is, I think, excellent for the money. We, we measured it at 477 nits brightness, above 100% sRGB when factoring in my color gamut checker tool, around 78, 79 for Adobe and P3 color gamut, also pretty dang good, and the screen is contrasty enough, looks very good overall, great for a casual gamer, not quite as colorful as what you would want for a professional video editor or Photoshopper, unless you're okay with a little bit lower color gamut. You know, it's just not the ideal for that. You could use this for that, being 100% sRGB, but it's not gonna be as vibrant or as colorful as the more vibrant and colorful displays out there. Now, other potential competitors, probably the top competitor to this, probably the Legion 5 Pro is gonna be a little bit cheaper than this right now, given the price tag. I paid $13.49 for my unit when it was on sale a couple weeks ago, but the Legion 5 Pro is currently on sale for $70 less than this and has very similar specs, at least in a lot of ways. I think the Omen 16, Oris, and Fi Oris 15X are also pretty good competitors, but this is very competitive. And I think it's a very compelling overall argument, but there are a number of cost cutting ways in which this laptop is cheaper than some of these other laptops out there, okay? This does have G-Sync and Advanced Optimus, allowing you to switch the GPU on and off on the fly. I did not mention that point in the review, but I did check that and verify that it does have those features. Um, you can see, it has G-Sync right here, G-Sync sticker right there as well. Taking this laptop apart was a little bit difficult getting it to actually pop open, but once we got it popping, it kind of came off. You definitely will want good tools, good plastic pry tools for taking this laptop apart. Upgradeability wise, it has two uh, sodium slots for your RAM. You can, the nothing is soldered. You can upgrade those to a more RAM if you want. It also has an open M.2 slot. It comes with 512 gig SSD in here, out the box, not that much space. So you can add that second SSD if you wanna increase your storage. And that would be probably the way to do it so you don't have to mess with reinstalling Windows or anything just by adding a second SSD. Quality control of the laptop. I feel like uh, we had no quality or build quality issues. The hinge is sturdy enough, firm enough. It's not the most sturdy hinge though. 
um, out there, but it's good enough. The flex on the laptop is pretty firm overall, but there is some flexy parts near the middle of the keyboard and the space bar here, but typically you don't press down on that area of the laptop anyway. The, the ports on this are also pretty dang good. You got five total USBs, two USB-Cs. One of those is USB 4, which is the high throughput, high bandwidth USB-C port version. And both of those USB-C ports support DisplayPort and 65 watt power delivery charging if you wanna carry just a USB-C charger with you instead of the big power brick. And speaking of the power brick, it's a 330 watt, pretty monsters, large one, larger than this laptop really needs, to be honest. So getting that uh, 65 watt power delivery brick would probably be a smart idea if you go with this laptop. The webcam quality was decent but not super detailed, pretty low resolution, and there's no windows hello. The keyboard is a four zone RGB keyboard. I can switch this. You can see the four zone RGB keyboard here. It's not super bright, but it's bright enough you can see it. I definitely think there's better RGB implementations out there. Not the most expensive keyboard, but the keys feel pretty good. It's a membrane keyboard. The touchpad on the other hand is plastic. It doesn't glide very well, and it's not as large as some of the other laptops out there. So I think the touchpad is definitely an area where you're gonna get a lot better touchpads on more expensive laptops and definitely an area where Acer saves some money. Speaker wise are not very good, but they're, they're good when just delivering like mids. Like if you're just getting mids, it's pretty decent actually. And they're, they feel, they felt honestly louder in the games. When we were just playing games and I was listening to the audio of the games, the game audio sounded pretty dang good. I don't know, it didn't sound as noticeable. When I'm listening to music and there's a lot of bass, a lot of mids and highs all going off at once, everything becomes muddled and it's not very good. So overall, the speaker quality is like a six, a 6.5, somewhere in that range, it's very low end, but because the fans on this can actually get very quiet, the speakers that, like when the speakers are going on, because the fans are so quiet in performance mode, uh, inside of the different fan profile modes, I found that performance or sorry, balanced mode, actually balanced mode is the right one to do. If you're in balanced mode, the fans are so quiet that you can easily hear the speakers that are on here. So no problem there. And you're still getting very good temps and performance in games, at least in Last of Us. Uh, but just know this is not some super high quality speaker system for sure. Definitely a drawback compared to more premium systems out there that have higher quality, bigger speakers. We already talked about the display. Let's talk about Cinematch R23. We got 14,150 in our 10 minute test. Uh, which is good, good enough for video editing, good enough for gaming, good enough for just about everything you wanna do uh, with a CPU, but it, you're gonna do it slower. You're gonna do it slower than the higher end CPUs, the new CPUs this year that are similar to this can do it do closer to 17, 18, 20,000, depending on which CPU it is, because it can go to higher boost clock. This is an older, basically RDNA 3 G, uh, CPU. The RDNA 4 CPUs can go to higher boost clocks and are a little more power efficient because they're made on a lower, a smaller nanometer technology. And then of course, if you go to the the Intel or the 16 core 32 thread Ryzen chips, you can obviously get way more CPU performance out there. If you're after just CPU performance, this is not really the laptop for you necessarily, but this is a nice blend of good GPU performance for the money, decent CPU performance for your money, a very good display for your money. That's the, that's the, it's got like the three pillars of a good gaming laptop. And then everything else is just filler. It does it all right. Like it's an all right keyboard. Okay. It bare, bare bones touchpad. The ports doesn't have Thunderbolt 4 support, but other than that, it's pretty good selection of ports, you know, mini, S, uh, mini SD card slot, he headset adapter. The one downside with the ports, I will say, we only have a USB 2.0 over here, not even 3.2, 2.0. So this is only gonna be used for your keyboard or mouse or something very basic for your input and output type of thing here. Last of Us, in the 80 FPS range, QHD resolution had to turn textures to medium to avoid 1% low stuttering, which is an issue with the RTX 4070. If you don't know, VRAM was only eight gigs on this unit, which is tough when you're dealing with a QHD resolution because a lot of the games that are just coming out want more than eight gigs at QHD resolution with the uh, ultra settings for sure. Many of the new games are gonna be that way. So you're gonna have to get used to turning textures down to medium or low, or at least not on ultra. 
um, or turning your render resolution for DLSS down to quality, from quality down to balanced or performance, because that also can lower your VRAM utilization. Dying Light 2, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Witcher 3 were also very playable, though the Witcher 3, if you have all the ultra settings turned on, only like a little over 60 FPS, which is not really ideal, I think, for that game. You really want closer to 90. So disabling ray tracing gets us closer to 100. This gaming laptop is perfectly playable at QHD resolution as long as as you tweak texture settings down and occasionally have to turn off ray tracing in some of the most demanding titles. That's basically what I'll say. It's very good overall gaming performance. We had very good overall temperatures. The fan noise is very loud in max fans, but once you turn it to balanced mode, it was very good fan noise. Performance mode had fan noise going up and down. I would not recommend performance mode from a fan profile perspective. Quiet fans really limits your CPU performance and performance mode's already pretty dang quiet. So I would just probably just run balance. Um, not really much point in quiet mode unless you're like in a library and you really need it to be just super, super quiet. Yes, I can recommend this. And I'm sure someone's gonna wanna know about battery life. This laptop has a Ryzen CPU with, and as long as you optimize this guy really well, um, by, by optimize, I mean don't have applications constantly driving the CPU or GPU to uh, high levels of usage. You should be able to get good battery life, six to eight hours when web browsing at least, uh, maybe even a little more if you're really optimized, because uh, we do have a 90 watt hour battery in here, so that's excellent. So really battery life is gonna highly vary depending on how you optimize and use the system. Gaming on this is obviously gonna kill the battery life in an hour and a half. Running just office applications with brightness and on low and airplane mode, like just doing work or something, you could probably get more than 10 hours of battery life in that type of scenario. So it's just gonna really depend on what and how you use it, what you do on it and how much power you're using on it in the moment. But yeah, if you don't optimize at all and you're just web browsing, you're probably gonna get like in the four to six hour range. So that's kind of my thoughts on the Acer Nitro 16. Can I recommend it? What, where's the major drawback here? I mean, for 1349, you get the QHD, higher color gamut, higher brightness display that's better than most of the competition out there. You're getting a good thermal system that's keeping this thing very cool. Uh, you have the options. Uh, I mean, it's this the, the, main, the main reason to not buy this, the main reason to not buy this is that you want a more premium experience. The premium experience you're missing out on on this laptop, not a glass touchpad, no windows, hello. Uh, the display brightness is not more than 500 nits, but it's close to 500, it's supposed to be 500 nits, 477 nits. The color gamut on this is not as high as 100% Adobe RGB, which is just makes things not as colorful, you know? And the, the more premium laptops that cost 500 to 1,000, $2,000 more than this have mini LED displays that are even brighter and more colorful um, if you spend like $500, $800 more than this, you can get something with like 500 nits brightness with 100% Adobe RGB, um, which is a bit better than this. Yeah, and the keyboard obviously not mechanical, uh, membrane keyboard and no Thunderbolt 4 support because this is AMD. You spend more money, you get more features, but if having a plastic touchpad, lacking windows to low, and this color gamut brightness levels are good for you, there's not too many drawbacks to this laptop. That's my Acer Nitro 16 review. So thank you so much for your time. I'll see you in the next one, and hopefully that'll be soon. Early next week.